Well, hello, fishing friends. And if you're new here, welcome. So last year I made a video, Catching Sharks 101. And it's actually one of my top videos. But that was last year. And now there's a new update that's came out. And there's been some changes. So I thought this would be a great time to make a new 2.0 version of that video. So today's going to be all about catching these sharks. Um, it's catching the ones that'll come and grab your fish when you bring in a fish. So we're not talking about like the uh, epic sharks or any of those. These are just going to be the rare sharks that grab your fish. So um, that there is a tiger shark. So you got your tigers and you have your makos. Those are going to be found um, on both the uh, South Korea and the U.S. West. However, they're not going to be on all locations of U.S. West. So if you're trying to work on your Mako badge uh, or your Mako uh, award, you're going to want to do that on the uh, South Korean levels. And like I said, you can catch them on U.S. West, but they're just not, they're not on all maps. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not as popular as the uh, U.S. West ones. So stick with the light location 20 or you know location 17 is a pretty popular one for catching the makos um and then you're going to have the uh six gills right here and the great whites up there um those are only going to be found on us west dlc and uh those are going to be on all locations however if you're trying to go after the great white shark um the best place that we have found has been location 20. Uh, I've gotten it on other locations, but location 20 is the best place if you want to go look for the great white. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different sharks that we're going to be catching, uh, let's go ahead and go over and talk about the different gear that we're going to use. Okay, so now we're going to talk about fishing tackle. And what I'm going to recommend is using, of course, saltwater float rod A, or casting rod A, if you want to use uh, the lures. And of course, float rod A or casting rod A as well. Um, the reason that we're going to be using these, so for float rod A, um, as you can see, you have your power over there um, and you have your action. Those are pretty high. Now, when you're using like B, those are going to be a lot lower. Your action is going to help you with your snaps and your power is going to help tiring out the sharks faster. Okay. And of course you have your distance as well for your distance. Um, your rod a will actually cast 300, the full 300 meters or yeah, I believe it's meters or feet. I don't remember what the, what that was, but, uh, so it will actually cast 300 as opposed to the rod B, which will cast 250 feet. So I believe it is feet, not meters. All right. And now when we go to the, uh, the reel here, we look at this tension, it's, that's how strong the line is. So that's going to help you maintain that, those sharks on there. Um, you have your drag, it's how well the reel handles when the fish swims away. And then your line length. Now when you catch a fish, um, if, you, if you cast out 300 feet and your line length only allows it to run 250 feet because you're using reel B, your line's going to snap. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using reel A with your rod A so that your fish can run just as far. Now when a, when a shark runs, it's going to run out to the distance of the, where your original fish was that you caught. Um, so if you catch a fish at 250 feet and it, you know, it, it runs, uh, the fish is running a couple times and then it lands a shark, that shark is going to take off running on you and it's going to go out to that 250 foot mark where you originally caught that fish. So that's something to keep in, in mind there. And of course your durability goes down the more you use your rod and reel. Now for casting, if you want to do casting um, or float fit your lure fishing, I would highly recommend um, using a spinner. Like if you're doing this on expert level, um, go with a spinner because that's going to get you your small fish. So I would say grab a casting rod A, casting reel A, and a spinner and go out there and target those small fish. And if you get a big fish on there, you know, it's, if you get a giant fish, it's not going to be able to catch a shark. So, all right, so let's go, uh, let's go fishing here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to location 20. So here I am on location 20. Uh, again, this 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 is just a method, so you can do this in both South Korea and U.S. West. Um, I'm just going over the different methods. Like I said, this is going to be the location where I'm going to be catching great whites. So I like to come out here and uh, fish for great whites. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my float fishing. And I'm going to use a grasshopper. All right. So the reason I'm going to be using a grasshopper is I'm going to be using what's called a fish buffet method. Now the fish buffet method was termed by Scott Sublet, um, Doc Cincy. Uh, in the game, he he found this way to catch um, sharks quicker. So if you haven't watched the video, um, I actually have a video. It'll be up here in the top right corner if you're on PC that uh, you can click on and watch the video where he helps me catch my first great white using the fish buffet method. So that's a really good method to use if you want to catch sharks over and over and over. And basically what it is, is you're targeting small fish. And if you don't get a shark after it runs two times, you quick release it. And uh, that'll get rid of the, the fish. And then that fish will go back to the exact same spot where it was before. And you just keep catching that small fish over and over and over until you get a shark. Um, one downfall on that is you will go through bobbers and you will go through your bait pretty quickly because every time you let it go, you know, you, you have a chance of your bobber breaking or anytime you quick release your bait, you, know, you lose that bait. So you do go through a lot of bait and bobbers, but it is a fast way to catch those sharks. All right. So I'm going to switch to hard. Oh, I'm already on hard. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for this small fish right here. And we want to make sure that it's green. As you notice that none of the other fish are green. So that's why you're using this grasshopper. It makes it easy to target that fish. And uh, yeah. So it's going to be out at nearly 300 feet. So if you remember before I said you want to make sure that you have a uh, rod A and reel A. If you had a reel B and you grab this fish at 300 feet. And that shark takes off running once it, you know, once you grab it here and it takes off running, it's going to run all the way out there to 300 feet. And if your line is only good for 250 feet, it's going to snap. So you want to make sure that you have a rod A and real B or real A as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my line up to the top because this is a top water fish. One of the other things you want to make sure is when it turns red, when you, you know when you're bringing your fish in, you want to make sure that your line is not red at any point. Um, the reason for that is, is when your line is red, if a shark grabs on it when the line is red, that's when it will immediately jump off. So if you've ever caught a shark and it just phew, takes off right away, that is probably because your line was red. See how my line was red there? So when it comes in, make sure. All right, so I didn't get a fish there, or didn't get a shark there. I'm going to go ahead and release it. Pull back on my thumbstick to quick release it. As you see my bait, it had that white circle around it. That means I lost my bait, okay? I'm going to cast right back out. As you can see, that same fish is still there. So I'm going to cast right back out for it. And let it sit there. It turned red. And I'm going to continue to do this until I get a shark on there. Okay, we got a shark on the line. Now, one of the things you could do is stand up and let, don't touch your trigger or don't try to reel in while he's running. Once he stops running, go ahead and bring your line straight up and start reeling in. You're going to want to reel in right away. When he goes over to the left or the right, make sure you're pulling the opposite direction. Let go of your trigger and stop reeling. To get your snap, all you got to do is just move your wrist to the left and right. Flashes in the middle, just pull straight up. Keep that line straight up in the air. Pulling over to the left when he goes to the right. And see now he's tired. Now is when you're going to want to reel in fast. Going splashing in the middle, pull straight up. 
you want to make sure that you're getting these directional pulls in. See, when he jumped, I just kind of snapped my wrist while he was in the air. And that got my snap in. And as you can see, when he took off, he went right back to the same place where I was catching my fish. All right. And he goes left and right. See, I just snapped my wrist. That's, you just barely got to move your wrist to get that snap. And if you miss a snap here and there, don't worry, you'll still bring the shark in as long as you are getting these directional poles in. Okay, keeping that line straight up in the air, going to the left when he goes to the right, and the right when he goes to the left. See, I just barely moved my wrist just to, just to snap it. To the left. See how I'm over-exaggerating my poles too? I'm kind of, and I'm letting go. The important thing is let go while you're getting your poles in as well. Don't reel in at all when you're trying to get your poles in. The only time you want to reel in is when you're not doing your poles. Okay, just doing that. As you can see, it's taking a little bit longer because he was at 300 feet out. Um, but he's not coming in too terribly slow. We're going to get him in, go straight up in the air. As you can see, I'm, I stop reeling when I'm getting my directional poles in there. That's very important. Just bringing him in. The reason I say stand up is because you can actually get your snaps in a lot easier and stuff when you're standing. You have more control when you're standing up. So you can do it sitting, um, but I would say if you're starting out catching sharks, go ahead and stand up. You know, if you could do so safely, go ahead and stand up. And as they get closer and closer and closer, you're just barely hitting that trigger because you don't want them to get away. Reach out snap up and there you go we got a six skill shark right there all right so let's go over what we learned so you want to make sure that you're holding your rod straight up in the air okay go ahead and uh, keep him you want to make sure that you're getting your directional pulls in both left and right and if he's just splashing in the center you're pulling straight up so and like i said over exaggerate him you know pull back pull back that way when he's going to that right side pull back to the left so that you know you're you're going against his pull and stop reeling do not reel in when you're doing your pulls but if you're one-handed which i highly recommend fishing one-handed for sharks um it it makes it a lot easier that actually is one of the things that helped me is going to one-handed um you can do two-handed if you're used to doing two-handed go ahead and stay with two-handed but um, i know one-handed helped me a lot in the beginning when i was first learning um so make sure you get those directional pulls in. Make sure you get try to get those snaps in. If you miss a snap here and there, it's not a big deal. Um, the important thing is those directional pulls. And like I said, just a, a snap is all you're doing is just you're just snapping your wrist. That's all you got to do. Just snap your wrist. Nothing crazy. You don't need to flip back here and there. You're just snapping your wrist. Just like that. All right. So hopefully this helped you. Um, hopefully you can go out there now and and get that shark with no problem. I know it's pretty frustrating your first few. My first few sharks were really frustrating. Once you catch your first, second, third shark, it gets a lot easier. Once you start learning your technique, learning how to you know, get those directional poles in there, getting your snaps in, it gets a whole lot easier. So just keep at it. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. You will catch that shark eventually. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button so you can see more tutorials like this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.